So in this video we're going to make a dipole antenna for the 5 GHz spectrum. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I've got a few projects coming up where we're going to need a 5 GHz dipole and it's going to be a lot easier just to refer back to this video instead of showing over and over again in the video how to make a 5 GHz dipole and of course makes the video a lot longer. Now of course as you can see uh, I've got some measurements uh, in front, I've got one for the 5.8 GHz and one for 5 GHz, just slightly over 5 GHz actually, but uh, the measurements do get smaller and smaller and smaller. So as for using copper wire for this particular dipole, what I've got here is some multi-core earth cable and I'm going to strip that and get the uh, copper out of that to make the dipole antennas out of. So this is what it looks like when you strip it, you've got uh, multiple cores of copper wire running through and you can just pick out a piece and straighten it out a little bit and we'll use that for our dipole antenna. Now as for the actual gauge of this wire I'd have to guess it's around 23. This gauge here is actually 21 and that's what I normally use for 2.4 GHz but uh, we're going to find it a lot easier to uh, construct the 5 GHz dipole, especially when it comes to the coils using slightly thinner wire. So we're going to start off measuring the first part here. Now, I'm not going to measure it exactly, I'm going to leave myself a look, enough to play with. So I'll just put a quick measurement around 25 so I can cut that off later. I'll put a little mark where I'm going to start to actually measure out the coil here which is 29 millimeters and of course when you're dealing with something like this I mean even the thickness of your sharpie marker the tip of it can uh, make a difference it really can so I'm going to measure off at 29 and I'm using this slightly cheaper white ruler here because it shows up better on camera but you really want to try and get yourself something like this steel one here where you've got um, quite a lot of different marks on there for quarter, millimetres, etc. So we'll measure off at 29 millimetres for the coil length. Put a little mark there. And again, what we're going to do is trim it off, but the top part of the element here is actually 27.8, but I'm going to just make sure I've got enough to play with so just slightly over 30. So I've cut the excess away just to make it a little bit easier to make this coil in the middle. So to actually make the coils I've got this screwdriver here and it is about two millimeters in diameter that shaft that we're going to use to do the coils. Now I used to have a um, metal skewer as well that was around this diameter but uh, I misplaced it but you want something like this nice small diameter so what we're going to do, we're going to start at the bottom and hold that first mark there with your thumb and then slowly start turning it around. Trying to keep it as tight as possible. You can probably just see that little black mark there. So bring it over and then we'll stop. Now once you've got it like that, what I'm going to do is just pinch those coils together. Like so. So we've got them all nice and uniform and then we can get a, something like a craft knife and then go in between the coils and just gently tease them apart to get them all nice and uniform. You want to make sure none of those coils are touching. You want to get them all nice and uniform. So once you're happy and you've got them tidied up then you want to put your metal skewer or screwdriver, whatever you're using, back on. And then we want to bend this one up at a right angle to follow the path of this screwdriver. Like so. And we can 
tighten that up to more of a right angle with some uh, needle nose pliers and hold the coils with your thumb again and do the same on that side this is why it's much easier using thinner wire and now what we can do is take our needle nose pliers and just straighten all that out so once you've got uh, everything nice and uniform and as straight as you can get it then what we're going to do is the end driven element here I'm going to trim that off to size so the next part of the antenna here is 13.4 millimeters this is at the base about there so now what we want to do is look at how we're going to actually connect our antenna to um, our Wi-Fi card etc and we're going to use some reverse SMA connectors again now you can either buy these pigtails off eBay cut them down to size and use these which are already crimped on or you can crimp your own on this is a short piece of LMR cable and this is the 2.4 GHz one that I made and we need some kind of metal tubing to go here which on the 5 GHz one is going to be 13.4 millimeters long and then obviously solder this on to our centre connector coming up through this so for this video I'm going to use this already pre-crimped off eBay little pigtail here and for the tubing for this this is a uh, telescopic antenna that I've taken apart and just choose the appropriate diameter where your actual coax will fit through and then we can cut this down to length and actually use this as our ground plane if you like on our dipole antenna so I'll strip back to reveal the actual outer braid of the coax here but I haven't uh, stripped the center element yet and I've cut a little bit of it away because we don't actually want all that length and then you want to feed your metal tube over the top of that and I've already prepared this metal tube so we can solder onto it so I've just got some abrasive paper and got rid of all that chrome and what I like to do is leave about four or five millimeter gap between this and the actual uh, SMA connector here because that's metal underneath this uh, actual heat shrink and then it's just like when we made the 2.4 gigahertz it's going to push all this down into the tube and then put a little bit of solder around the top to actually seal it and hold this in place so once you've got it all packed down in there just flow a little bit of solder just to hold it all in place just be careful of the heat let it cool down in between and you want to be careful you don't flow too much solder in there because you can actually build up a bulge and that will actually add to the wavelength of this uh, metal tube here so it's uh, at 5 gigahertz the measurements are really really small and going to be quite precise as well so I've stripped back the center part of the coax but I've left a little bit of the shielding the plastic sheath on here and it's uh, about two millimeters just to uh, keep it isolated from the outer part of the coax on this uh, metal tube here so of course when we make these two together we're going to have to remove that couple of millimeters from this part of the antenna here otherwise we'll be um, offsetting the actual wavelength and to actually make them up what I've done I've pre-tinned this center connector and cut any excess back and I've pre-tinned the actual element that we've made and I'm just gonna marry them both up and again just go back and check measurements of this gap here so it's all finished now and I put it inside of an old pen and just sprayed it black so uh, what I thought I'd do with this is hopefully I'll give it a try is here we've got the 2.4 gigahertz one that I made in a previous video and thought we'd compare the 2.4 gigahertz with the 5 gigahertz one that I've just made now 
Most manufacturers, and even when I bought my latest Alpha card, that is dual band, gave me a 2.4 gigahertz antenna with it. And what most manufacturers say is that roughly 5 gigahertz is half of 2.4, so you can use 2.4. Now that's not necessarily true with the microwave spectrum. If you get an antenna that's spot on and tuned exactly for that frequency, you're going to get much better performance. So. I've moved my test router a little bit closer, it's only 25 meters away as opposed to 45 meters because the 5 GHz band isn't as powerful. And first of all I thought we'll give it a test with this one and see what kind of performance we get and then uh, I'll uh, put this one on and see if there's uh, any notable, noticeable difference that we can see between having a properly tuned antenna on the uh, 5 GHz spectrum. So I've got the 2.4 gigahertz connector at the minute and it's uh, hovering around a little bit. It seems to be settling on around 84, it's dropped back off again, a little bit up and down. So not a bad signal from the 2.4 gigahertz antennas. It is a little bit up and down, it's not very stable. I'm going to swap it out now, it seems to have settled on about 78, jumping up again. So disconnect this one and connect the 5 GHz antenna in. There you go, it's jumped up 200%. So, just as I hoped, it uh, just shows you what a properly tuned antenna can do. It's going to be settling on about 89, jumping up again. So, although 2.4 GHz one looks bigger and you tend to think it'd be more powerful, when it comes to antennas, size doesn't matter. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one.